Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, good evening, good evening, Bethany family, and welcome to the recap, recap where we like to just take this time to digest everything that we have been experiencing in the sanctuary as well as on social media. But before we get into all that, as you always know, we like to take this time to welcome you, right? So please make sure that you like, you comment, and you share. You know, sometimes we have some secret watchers that we see the numbers, but you don't say anything. So we want to give you, you know, a, a great introduction as well as show you that love, you know, virtually right now. So please make sure that you put in the comments of where you're tuning in from. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in, make sure you put your name in the comments, introduce yourself to some other people as well as, you know, saying, hey, it's my first time. And yeah. simply you can put the VIP in the comments so we know that it is your first time. But again, please make sure that you drop where you're tuning in from, how you're feeling on this Monday. It is a beautiful um, Monday here in Jersey. Um, but I want to hear where you're tuning in from. You may be on the West Coast, down South, or in another country. Let us know where you're tuning in from because, you know, something that we love to do here at Bethany is just stay connected as a church family, as a church body, um, which is why we have the Connection Church, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we have uh, people who are men members with us from all over mm -hmm. the world, all over the galaxy. Yes. Um, and are just, you know... It's a beautiful thing. Um, we've seen people come from New York, uh, from Florida, Maryland. Yes. Um, so it's great to be able to connect with each other, mm -hmm. um, especially after the pandemic. You know, we're able to uh, do that now. Mm -hmm. um, I see Living Well is joining us for the first time from Georgia. <laughs> we're so glad to see you. So glad to see you. Um, so glad to see you. Yeah, but the Connection Church is a beautiful thing. Um, it's a beautiful way for us to be connected, um, but for those who aren't in the area to still be part of everything that we do here at Bethany. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as we take this time to recap everything that's happening around the sanctuary, everything that's happening online, we also want to hear from you. You know, you guys watch the content, you attend services. So we want to hear your perspectives, your thoughts on this, you know, this week service, Sunday service, as well as our word impact gathering services, because the spirit has been moving in those yeah. services this from the worship to the word to the noise it's it just everywhere so we want to hear from you guys you know as Maya always loves to say you guys are our third our fourth our fifth our sixth our seventh mm -hmm. this is a conversation and a dialogue it's not just us coming up here and talking we want to hear from you guys as well so please make sure that you drop your perspectives drop your questions drop your comments um, in the comment section and also let someone know that we're on you know I simply, you know, by sharing it. I see a lot of people today in the chat are saying how they shared it. So we appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. Kifi, uh, my leader, I see you guys. Keisha, living well. So happy that you are here right now. I think I'm missing someone. Am I missing anybody, Mai? Um, Helen Posey. Yes, Helen. I see Helen's here. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you guys always okay. in the comments. Okay. Fabio, yep. Awesome. Awesome. So happy you guys are tuning in. You're liking, commenting, and sharing. Um, but Maya, how you feeling today? How you feeling on this Monday? Um, and everything as I go and share. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good. It was a fantastic weekend. Um, service yesterday was amazing. The spirit was high. People were running around the church, you know, just the praise okay. uh, that was felt an experience yesterday uh, was a wonderful thing, um, but it was also a fantastic weekend because we got to celebrate your 50th birthday! Oh, 50th birthday! <laughs> oh my gosh! 50 has never looked so good. Ever. <laughs> so, happy birthday again to you, Kevin. Thank you! Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a good weekend. How about yours? It was great. It was great. Um, as my this year, yes, I did turn a year older. Um, and this year is very personal for me because it is the 30, the big three zero. Mm -hmm. um, but every time my birthday comes around, I like to just reflect on the year and, you know, what 
Um, I, you know, what I'm looking forward to in the upcoming weeks, as well as this new year. So I'm just thanking God and praising God just to see another year first off, but also be surrounded with um, love and happiness and joy from my family to my friends. Um, it was just a great, great weekend. Um, I'm still on an emotional high right now, <laughs> but I'm just so grateful and I'm thankful. So thank you, Maya. Thank you, everyone. I see in the comments saying happy birthday. I truly appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it's, again, it's great seeing everyone mm -hmm. um, again um, at church. And uh, we want to make sure that you guys know that you are more than welcome to come and worship with us. We have our 11 a.m. Uh, worship experiences that happen every Sunday at 11 a.m. <laughs> um, there is no registration required. However, we do ask that you bring your driver's or uh, ID, your driver's license or ID, as well as a completed vaccination card. Yes. Um, because, you know, though things are getting back to normal, we still want to make sure that we're being safe and practicing precautions and whatnot. So, um, but again, we're excited to see you on Sunday and just to spend this time with you. Also, um, you know, as a church body, we love to do our corporate fasting and everything. And we are currently in our Lenten season, mm -hmm. right? And each week we've been dropping videos of just how to keep yourself fit, you know, fed during this time, right? Yeah. Um, so what are we, what can we look forward to in this season as we're pre preparing for a Catch the Fire initiative, Mai? Yeah. So like I've said, Lent is kind of our, our countdown to Easter, which is like our Super Bowl, Super Bowl right? Um, yes. So we're just really making sure that we're taking this time to spend um, in relationship with Christ, growing closer to him um, and being loved up on him, loving him. Um, but a part of that is also being able to love others, as we've been learning um, during our, our services lately. Um, so something that we're doing this Lent, uh, let me find this graphic. Here it is. Uh, we are doing a Transforming Lives Catch the Fire drive where we're collecting coats, gloves, hats, toiletries, all new or gently used. Mm -hmm. Um to give and sow into our community because people, you know, are struggling. Um, and a part of loving God is by showing love to others. So this is just a way that we're doing that. Yes. Um, so you can uh, bring your donations to um, with you to church and drop them in the bins in the, in the main lobby. Or you can just sew online um, by going to our website, go to Bethany.com slash giving, and you'll be able to see uh, where you can, donate into cash the fire um and then we'll of course take those uh, donations and buy the um the hats and gloves and all those things um on our end um but yeah i think it's just a beautiful full circle way uh to just really prepare and to celebrate easter absolutely absolutely because as we celebrate easter you know easter is like you said the super bowl for us mm -hmm. um and how, what better way of showing God's love by being a blessing to someone else? Um, and I love our Catch the Fire initiatives, you know, always, you know, in the last quarter of the year. But I'm happy that we are, you know, doing this during this Easter season as well. It just makes it feel more, um, just feel God's presence more mm -hmm. when it comes to these initiatives and just doing God's work. Um, it's just an amazing feeling. So we do encourage you guys. Um, it's our prayer that you do join us to catch this fire and be a blessing to so many people in the community um, here in Jersey or, you know, a blessing to someone else around the world. Right. Absolutely. So speaking of being a blessing, Bishop has been a blessing to us like he is every week as he mm -hmm. can continues to keep us fed. He continues to keep teaching us and he just has our minds like, just like, where is this man grabbing all this, this wisdom, this knowledge from? I know it's in his Bible, but yes. it is God. God is just mm -hmm. present in these services, right, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into anything, I just want to, how are you, we are now in March, mm -hmm. third month of the year. Um, how have you been enjoying riding this wave of new, you know, riding this new wave of glory in this third month thus far in 2023? Man, so far it's just been wavy, a lot of ups and downs. 
Um, but just really just showing the opportunities that are open to us all um, mm-hmm. as long as we're, you know, continuing to ride with Christ and to mm-hmm. be open minded and whatnot. And I think that's what a new wave of glory is, is that we're allowing mm-hmm. ourselves to uh, be drawn out by the flow, by the flow of God. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot going on. The the messages that Bish has been preaching you know, from looking out from the snakes in the gardens to uh, our, our purpose and yeah. how purpose, you know, comes with trouble. So it's showing us that it's not always going to be butterflies and roses. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some low tides, mm-hmm. but there's an other end to it that um, I know I'm excited to to see in this new year. Absolutely. And the last time that we did talk, um, Bishop started to talk about those seducers, right? Um, he talked about that um, that you may have someone that tries to, you know, draw a disconnect between you and your faith and your relationship with God. And Bishop calls them seducers, right? There are some seducers that are inside the church. So he says, don't let them shake your foundation. So what I love about um, what I love about this idea of seducers, not even just in the church, just seducers all over, mm-hmm. um, it just shows, it just shows how you need to watch what you say and also what you receive. Um, I'm one that's very big on, you know, speaking things into existence, um, big on also not allowing people just to speak anything over your life. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, because especially in our generation, I feel like there's, there's a lot of people that uh, follow each other or they, if someone has a strong opinion, then we automatically think that's right. And I feel like um, that's a disconnect within, you know, our generation, because if you just think anyone's opinion is right, you're just going to follow anything. Right. Right. Um, And sometimes as we know, as Christians, it's hard to stand on what we believe in our faith and not looking at what's, happening on the left or the right of us and all just staying focused on God, especially during those moments when your faith is tested, when your walk is getting hard, when you are walking through that valley and just like, I don't see a way out. Um, it's just easy for the enemy to just to creep up and say some things to make us make our faith shaky. Right. Am I, am yeah. I explaining it correctly? Ma? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, that's why it's really important to hone into what our foundation is. Mm -hmm. Um, and to really try to, you know, keep as close to that as possible, because like it said, especially in our generation, uh, we do put a lot of emphasis on what people say, what people say about us, Mm -hmm. you know, what's trending, what's cool. Uh, I remember when I was in college, it it was like, what's your clout? How many followers do you have Mm -hmm. on Instagram or on social media? So we put a lot of, I think, self-value in that, that you know, it can be easy to compromise ourselves if we're not careful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, I think it's good that we're kind of laying the groundwork and the foundation now. Absolutely. So that when those moments come, mm-hmm. one, we can be aware. Yes. Right. Uh, but then we can do something to kind of combat those things that happen. Absolutely. And, I just love that because, you know, Bishop said that sheep get lost fulfilling their own appetite. So sometimes we, you know, we have to look out for the seducers, but we got to also look out for, you know, what we say to ourselves as well, because absolutely we tend to, you know, want to fulfill our own appetite sometimes when God's just like, you ate enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it should yep. be full. Absolutely. And <laughs> one of the time, things- it's time to cut some things out, right? I've- Right. (laughs) One of the things that Bishop said was, you know, earlier this month was that spiritual attacks wait for doubt to be articulated. Yes. So that is just why it's so important to watch your Mm -hmm. words, watch Mm -hmm. what you're feeding into, because that creates room for, Mm -hmm. you know, negative things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I love that, especially when he says, you know, you know, sheep get lost fulfilling their own appetite is because sometimes we feel like I think as Christians, it's so hard to um, not it's hard to be a Christian, but it's just sometimes your faith can get, you know, a little shaky and everything. And 
you may lose that 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 faith in whatever you're believing God for. And then that's where that doubt creeps in. So when it comes to feeding our own appetite, to me, the strongest thing that you can do is put your pride aside. Mm -hmm. Um, Because pride could really, really tear you up. It can really, you know, affect what God has in store for you. So I think the, the most, the strongest thing that you could do is put your pride aside and allow God to work in your life. And I think that's something that we all struggle with because I, I'll say for myself, I am one that I like to have control in everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. I like to know the the start, the middle, and the end. Mm-hmm. I like to know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like so that's something personally that I've struggled with where I, where guys told me to sit, sit and wait. Yeah. I'd be like, God, but I like it. <laughs> it's the greatest lesson that you could yeah. learn is sitting there and waiting. And even in that, that era, that, that moment of waiting, you learn so much, you mm-hmm. grow so much, you grow closer to God in that moment of waiting. So I really feel like we, as people, we have to really take that, appreciate that moment when you are waiting on God. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we minimize it like it's a moment of weakness. It's a moment that, you know, I could be doing this X, Y, and Z, but you don't even know that God is preparing things in rooms that you have not even entered. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And I think Bishop spoke on this too when he said, you know, time is not your adversary. I mm-hmm. think that's often how we look when we have to, when we hear we got to be patient, we make it something negative because it, we feel like it's a waste of our time. We're mm-hmm. not fulfilling what we should be doing in the time that we're in, at the age that we're in, you know, whatever. But like you said, Kev, like, are we, we need to take it as an opportunity to learn and to reflect and to see mm-hmm. outside of where our focus might be, right? Yes. And sometimes you can only do that when you're having to be patient or told no or not yeah. right now. Yes. And it's so true, especially with your walk with Christ, you have to, you have to throw all your own perspectives away and just allow God to move with you. Because, you know, something that Bishop also said is that you never stop being taught. And I love that, you know, he said that because it shows us that we're a forever student. Mm -hmm. Every moment in our life, every month every year there's an opportunity to learn there's a a opportunity to grow and no matter how old you are or how wise you think you may be there's always something that needs to be taught and that's what i love about um you know when we do things like this like the recap where you know you think you know something about a topic but when you have a conversation or you have a dialogue or you find different scriptures to go with whatever the sermon may be, you're constantly learning. And that's what we have to understand when it comes to Christ, that we're not going to know everything, that there's going to be moments where God will humble you and be like, listen, you may have thought this, but I'm going to show you something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love that Bishop state that because sometimes I feel like we can, as Christians, we may turn our ears off to certain sermons. Amen. Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> uh, we turn our, you know, our head to, um, we'll turn our back to certain things that are taught in the church because we feel like, oh, I lived through that or that sermon's not applying to my life right now. It may apply to me 25 years ago or five years ago, but it's not applying to me now. But you don't know how that is being a blessing to you. Like perfect example, like, you may listen to a sermon like this sermon that we're, you know, we're talking about now and you may feel like, oh my gosh, I, I can't make the personal connect with this. Right. But by having a conversation and talking to someone, you don't know, you may be blessing someone else's life. Yep. By Absolutely. Talking about what's happening. Even if you don't think it's personally meaning to your situation right now, but being a blessing and sharing that word of God to someone else, maybe blessing someone else. Mm-hmm. Right? No, absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. You know, which is why, you know, we encourage you guys to share because it is going to be a blessing to someone. But I think what you said, too, like we just talked about patience. Things might not make sense right now, but I guarantee you at some point down the line in your life, you're going to recall. Oh, I remember when 
Bishop spoke about something like this. What did he say? Oh, okay. Now it makes sense because this is where I'm at in my life right now. Absolutely. And oh, well, she's watching for the first time. Glad to see oh, you. Oh, we have another VIP. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm happy that you are tuning in. Please make sure that you share, share, share. And also, we want to hear from you guys as well. So drop your perspectives, drop your comments. What did you feel about this service this past week or anything that's happening around um, the sanctuary, around the plaza, or here virtually online, right? Mm -hmm. So Bishop talked about these seducers. He talked about, you know, feeding our own appetite and, you know, staying faithful and, you know, continue to respect God and, um, you know, know that God, that he has, there's no limits to, you know, what God has in store for us, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to assessing who you are, my, right? Yeah. Whether it's you know your own personal prideful things or those that may be around you that may be those seducers that try to get in your ear, how do you take that moment to assess that? Like, you know, I'm assessing who I can have conversations with, who you know, what to say, or you, just protecting your peace in a sense. How do you assess that to protect your peace when it comes to? continuing your relationship with Christ and also growing closer to him and, and his word? Hmm. That's a great question. I think first part is that we need to hold Christ as a true relationship, hmm. not some, you know, being up in the sky, but a relationship. And most people, I know it could be a little, iffy sometimes in the social media era that we're in, but most people hold their relationships within boundaries, right? So I'm not going to share all my dirty laundry with you or things that happen between me and my relationship. That's not for everyone to know, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it can be the same for this in the sense that you have to be mindful of who you're letting in to that space. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. So like we said earlier, you know, being careful. Okay. Is this person being like really taking the time to think about this? Is this person, is she, or he going to be in my corner? Are they spirit led? Do we align in some way and how we, um, um, view our relationship with God, you know, things like that, like really have those type of inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also, um, I think, and this is the part about it that's not so fun. There are pink and red flags that are going to be saying, "Oh, there's something about this doesn't doesn't quite feel right," mm -hmm. or mm, "I don't quite gel with this person," you know. For this reason. Mm -hmm. And instead of just, you know, skirting those things under the rug, mm -hmm. really like taking the time to think about it and then reevaluating, okay, is this person mm -hmm. someone that I need to keep in my life or yeah. have as close um, in my life right now? Absolutely. Um, and just to summarize, one word to just summarize everything that you just say, I think is intentional because whatever it is, you have to be intentional about it. So when it comes to your relationship with Christ, you have to be intentional about that. But not only that, you have to be intentional about protecting that, mm -hmm. that energy, that atmosphere that, you know, you are learning and you're growing in and not allowing anyone to, you know, come in and interfere with that. Um, and not even just anyone, how about yourself as well? Um, being intentional about your personal growth, your spiritual growth as well. Um, and that's what, for me, this last three months about this riding this new wave of glory, that's what it's all about. Like, I feel like this is the year when, you know, we've been going through all the remainings of, you know, the pandemic and everything. But this year is about getting back, resetting that mindset, renewing that spirit and getting back to what we felt like we lost. Like for me, that's why this year is very personal for me because it's like, all right, it's me getting back to what I felt like I missed out on or what I, you know, missed because of the because of COVID or the pandemic and everything. So it's being intentional in that 
um, in your relationship with Christ and your relationship with yourself as well, because you got to love yourself before you can allow anyone else to love you. Yeah. Say it again. Say it again. God love, right? <laughs> so you have to be intentional. I think just to summarize everything, the word to summarize this whole conversation is being intentional. And that's what we're learning in this series about being intentional, about growing and loving on not only ourselves, but one another and growing together. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during our, our Bible studies, we've been talking about mm -hmm. purpose and we learned that purpose yes. isn't just about ourselves, but how we can uh, be of service and how we can make an impact on mm -hmm. the lives of those around us. Mm -hmm. And I feel like purpose is one of those things, you know, growing up where you're like, God, what is my purpose? Yeah. What am I meant to do here in this world? And that's a great question to ask yourself. But I think you also need to ask yourself, okay, what can I do to be of help? What can I do that's going to make an impact and bless someone's life? And Absolutely. in that process, you know, you just discover your purpose. Absolutely. And I love that you brought that up because I feel like that's what a lot of us are battling with, with that um, coming post COVID that mm -hmm. we feel like our purpose may have changed or, mm -hmm. you know, there's something else you want to explore, like purpose wise, you know, whether it's your career, whether, it, whatever it may be. Um, I feel like that is very important, especially during this time as we are somewhat getting back to some yeah. type of normalcy. Right. Yeah. Um, so what is our purpose? And Bishop has been doing such an incredible job teaching that every Wednesday. Something I do want to bring up um, that Keisha did kind of talk about is how Bishop has, you know, each week have been has been praying over those that have been sick. Um, it's been such a powerful moment being in a sanctuary yeah. and experiencing it. Um, like I always say, I am a worshiper, but I also um, I am moved by others' testimonies. You know when they are celebrating, when they are worshiping God and just seeing God move in others' lives really is the biggest blessing to me because it just shows God's presence. So Keisha, I do agree with you that, you know, that has been um, such an impactful moment in the last couple of weeks when it comes to, you know, our services, whether it's Bible study, our word impact Bible study, or our encounter services every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But speaking of our encounter services every Sunday, you know, we encourage you guys, we like to take this time to talk about, you know, the service, like to talk to you guys about what's happening online as well as in the sanctuary, in the plaza. But, you know, there's so much that happens throughout the week. So we, it, this is just a little taste of what, just a, a, just a tad, but we do encourage you guys to go back and watch service really dive deep into the word, really take that time and set the atmosphere for the worship um, because worship team does such an incredible job each and every Sunday, but really take, be intentional mm -hmm. about um, really receiving that worship and that word and really applying it to whatever you may be facing or whatever your situation is in this moment, right? So we do encourage you guys to go back and watch service. But what else can we look forward to this week that we can watch, My That's going to keep us fed throughout the week. Absolutely. So we have our Focus Singles Ministry. Uh, we're going to show, again, uh, a, a conversation uh, between millennials at the church and uh, relationships and oh. how to have a godly relationship. So that's happening on Tuesday tomorrow All at right. 7 p.m. Um, on Wednesday, of course, we have our Word Impact Gathering at 7 p.m. Uh, Bishop has been doing wonderful things uh, during these services. Um, as Kev said, you know, the revival that's been happening of people coming to the altar, whether it be for um, illness or business owners, you know, Bishop is, is anointing and blessing people as we, as we walk through whatever journeys we're going through in life at the moment. So definitely make sure that you do not miss out on all that's happening during our weird impact services. Uh, this Thursday at 7 PM, almost at the wrong time. Uh, we are also back with our sound mind mental health panel, um, who just talk about, you know, real, they talk about real things. Sometimes in the church, you know, people tend not to 
take notice of how our mental health might be, right? Absolutely. But that is a part of who we are. So um, it's definitely not a topic that we um, are shy away from here at Bethany. Uh, mm-hmm. So we'll be having our mental health talk, Sound Mind, on Thursday at 7 p.m. And then, of course, on Saturday, Bishop and Pastor Nick are uh, doing On Point at 9 a.m. where they talk about just about anything and everything, um, sports, politics, you know, social justice, all those things, um, and just things that you might want to talk about because you can call in and ask some questions as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so make sure that you uh, join us on Saturday at 9 a.m. And then, of course, a full day of worship on Sunday. We have our online-only service at 8 a.m. And then at 11 a.m., we have our in-person service. Uh, the worship is out of this world. Uh, I've been caught a couple times, you know, in the spirit. And if it's happening for me, <laughs> I know it's going to happen for you, too. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, definitely come on out. Again, there is no registration required. Uh, do please bring your um, vaccination cards and your IDs, and everyone is required to wear a mask. But it really is an awesome, awesome time. Absolutely, absolutely. So as always, it is a pleasure and is an honor uh, you know, being able to come up here and take this time to really fellowship with you guys and really get to see you guys virtually and talk to you guys. Um, you guys make this 10 times better by your comments, by liking, by sharing. And we truly appreciate you guys. And, you know, it is our prayer that you have an amazing and blessed rest of your week. Uh, again, thank you to everyone. Gave me a birthday shout out. Love you guys. Happy birthday. Ooh, 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 ooh. You I know I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Love you guys. Wish you guys have uh wishing you guys a blessed and fulfilling week. And we look forward to seeing you this Sunday um at service for eleven o'clock. <laughs>